Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Karen Dina, and today I'm going to talk about the importance of methylation in relation to folate and vitamin B12. Now, I know that this sounds like a rather complex topic, and it is to some degree, but I think that understanding this can really give us an idea of why vitamin B12 is so important. The information in this video builds on another video that I did recently called the Vitamin B12 Folate Connection. So let's get started. There are a variety of different molecules involved in the methylation pathway that involves vitamin B12 and folate. So let's take a look at them. Number one, we have folate. Now the scientific name for folate is tetrahydrofolate. And folate is important for DNA production and red blood cell formation. The word folate is derived from the Latin root folium, meaning leaf, which makes sense because leafy greens can be a very rich source of folate. Our next molecule is vitamin B12. Scientific name for vitamin B12 is cobalamin. And here is a structure of cobalamin right here. And as you can see, at the center of the vitamin B12 molecule is cobalt, and that's where vitamin B12 got its name. Now, the form of vitamin B12 we're going to talk about today is methylcobalamin, and that is one of the human bioactive forms of vitamin B12. The next molecule we'll talk about is methionine. Now, methionine is one of the essential amino acids for humans, and it comes from proteins in our diet. Our next molecule is SAM, also known as SAMe or s adenosyl methionine. Now, SAM is involved in many important methylation reactions, including ones that involve DNA and RNA function, the production of important cell membrane phospholipids, and the production of neurotransmitters. Our next molecule is homocysteine. Now, homocysteine is associated with inflammation in the human body, and it tends to be high in people with vitamin B12 deficiency. So here's a summary of the molecules involved in this methylation pathway. We've got folate, also known as tetrahydrofolate, vitamin B12, also known as cobalamin, methionine, SAMe, or SAM, homocysteine, and other various intermediates, as we'll see in a moment. Here is the pathway, and as you can see, it looks a little bit complicated, but if we start at the beginning, it's very understandable. Let's start down here with folate, also known as tetrahydrofolate. So as we consume folate, it is converted into 5,10-methylene tetrahydrofolate, which can go in one of two directions. It can go either into DNA synthesis and red blood cell production, or it can get converted into 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate, this methyl group on 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate is then transferred to cobalamin, vitamin B12, to form methylcobalamin. This methyl group then is transferred to homocysteine to form methionine. Methionine is then transformed into s adenosyl methionine, also known as SAM or SAMI. And then the methyl group after that goes into methylation reactions. Now, when SAM loses that methyl group, it is converted into homocysteine. Now, I mentioned earlier that this methyl group from SAM can go on to a variety of different methylation reactions. What molecules can that methyl group from SAM affect? Number one here is DNA and RNA. So methyl groups from SAM can affect our genetic code. Number two, membrane phospholipids, especially phosphatidylcholine. So methyl groups can affect the functioning of our cell membranes. And then neurotransmitters here, including serotonin, melatonin, epinephrine, and dopamine. So methyl groups can have an effect on our neurotransmitters as well. Once again, SAM loses a methyl group to these methylation reactions, and in the process forms homocysteine. Now, in a vitamin B12 deficiency, methionine is not regenerated by homocysteine. So less SAM is formed, and homocysteine levels tend to increase. 
as you can see, when we take vitamin B12 out of the equation, we no longer have methionine being regenerated from homocysteine. So we end up with less SAM and less methyl groups available for those important methylation reactions. So how does a vitamin B12 deficiency affect our neurotransmitters or our DNA or our cell membranes? This is a fascinating area of inquiry, and we have yet to understand all the details. But one thing that is very well understood is that vitamin B12 is very important for a variety of reactions throughout our body. And if you'd like to learn more about vitamin B12 and other related raw food and plant-based nutrition topics, I would encourage you to visit our website at rawfoodeducation.com where you can learn about our Science of Raw Food Nutrition series of classes. And if you're interested in vitamin B12 testing, nutrition consulting, or other laboratory testing, please visit our website at rawfoodconsulting.com. Thanks for watching. And if you found this information to be useful or interesting, please like, share, and subscribe.